It's great to be part here, a part of this panel on unconventional opportunities today at our very own mentor, yes, uh, founded by Deepak and me. Um, as a young practitioner of dance, I'd like to take you through my journey in dance a little bit and sort of how I've consciously chosen to balance it with a lot of other aspects of my life. Uh, so I started learning dance, Bharatanatyam, from my mother and guru, uh, Geeta Chandran, from the age of four. So at that time, I really didn't know uh, what I was in for. I was just sort of, it was happening in my own um, house, the classes she used to conduct, uh, happened in our own house. So I used to just get out of my bedroom, get into my uh, salwar suit and start dancing. So it was, at that time, I don't know whether I would call it passion as much as I would call it just routine and sort of just every day, uh, it's like brushing your teeth, you go and dance. So it was very much part of the everyday schedule. Um, and I continued to dance uh, for 24 years now. Uh, through whatever, I w whatever else I was doing. So I, I, through school, through college, through uh, my, master's in econo uh, my master's in development studies at LSE, I was dancing throughout all of that. And that was a very sort of, I think, conscious decision because I wanted to, that's what kept me alive and that's what kept me going. Uh, and I think dance is just so much uh, that it has to offer. It's just so holistic, uh, be it movement, uh, music, philosophy, architecture, sculpture, uh, mythology, history. It's just such a beautiful coming together of all of this. Uh, and the whole Guru Shishya Parampara where you're so closely mentored uh, through a guru who's so watchfully looking at you and advising you at every stage. And yet, as uh, Mr. Chandran said, that it's not only about the roots, but dance should also enable you to fly once you master the grammar. So I think all of that was something that really excited me and once I mastered the grammar is when really the passion came about for me. It was a little late uh, in my career in dance when I really began to think and feel passionately about dance when I thought that I could use it as a communication tool to do something uh, beautiful and to do something of my own and create choreographies that uh, would speak to me, that would experiment, uh, that I could experiment with my body on and uh, use that as a communication tool to reach out to diverse audiences. Uh, but I think, so I have two passions in life, dance and development. So the passion part is something that is, uh, that comes to me for both these things. And uh, so I had to work, I, I had to sort of excel in both. Uh, of course, this this meant that there was time for nothing else. So social life was kind of almost close to nil, and it still is. Uh, but I've tried to balance these two things, and I think one gives me the energy to do the other a little bit better. So for instance, the rigor, the discipline, uh, the sensitivity, the aesthetics, and uh, teamwork skills that I have learned through dance help me to perform better in my uh, professional uh, development work because there are a lot of these skills that are appreciated and uh, needed in a work in a workplace and I work for for the policy team of JPAL which is really a think tank so a lot of what the rigor the discipline the sensitivity is exactly what helps me in my workplace from which is uh, from 10 to 7 every day and similarly a lot of the skills that I've learned in development and in a professional workplace like uh, JPAL help me perform better in dance. So for instance, the managerial skills, a different sense of teamwork, uh, presentation skills. So dance is so much about presentation these days. Uh, a shoddily presented performance is not something that appeals to people and of, rightly so. Uh, so a lot of that, I think there are complementarities between these two professions which I really enjoy and I think one keeps me going to do the other. So that's about the passion. Regarding the plan, I don't think I ever had a structured plan. I, I'm more of a person who looks at the immediate short term and I, I've never looked at, like if somebody asks me, it's a typical interview question, what's your 10 year plan? Uh, I mean, no, I don't know and it, I'm, it's fine to not know uh, and I acknowledge that. So I don't think this was part of any master plan, but yes, I'm a very practical person. So um, while some people, have, uh, Fen is an example, Kishore is an example, have 
have had the courage to uh, sort of just leave everything and do something uh, just solely for their probably primary primary uh, passion. Uh, I have not had the courage to do that yet, uh, partly because I'm passionate about more than one thing. But uh, I think it comes with a lot of, uh, there's no pesa in dance. Or, and I can say that for a lot of the other performing arts as well, because I see people struggling. Uh, and, and, and it's just not viable. So a lot of the young dancers today, uh, the way the dance scene is changing, I think they are trying to buffer it in different ways. So some keep academia as a part-time job, and, and that's what keeps them going, and they cross-subsidize to be able to dance. Some, like me, are, are doing other professions. Some are, in fact, uh, treating teaching, teaching teaching dance as a buffer uh, to be able to, again, cross-subsidize and be able to do uh, uh, their passion. So for me, PESA is, I mean, I think it's important to think about it. It's not something that you can wish away. And, and it, dance is not immediately remunerative, not in the short term, definitely. So uh, there's a huge gestation period, at least in dance, before you can even think of earning something decent to fend for yourself. Uh, so that's definitely one of the constraints. And apart from that, it's also about the politics. Uh, so that's another P, uh, politics of dance, which is something that's sort of more out in the open now, uh, and probably even more than, say, in my mother's time, uh, where just getting performances is not so easy. So that's, it's a lot of maneuvering and uh, a lot of whole other things that are involved that you may not even factor into. And even the organization part. So you a dancer has to really double up as her own uh, manager, her own advertiser, her own uh, organizer, her own networker. So there are no other sort of, there's no support system that really enables all of this necessarily. So you have to have all these other skills to be able to excel in dance, which is a reality. And I think that's for all performing arts today. Uh, about the practicality, uh, I think I have a, quite a practical approach to both my passions, uh, because that, that's just part of my DNA. But uh, yeah, I think in terms of partnerships, I think there are lots of partnerships involved when you have to sustain a passion. And a lot of it is also on the home front, to get everything going on the home front, to be able to master in uh, so many things and, and to be able to put in those hours of rigor and, and not have everything, so sort of not have to spend too much time. Uh, so for me, I've had an amazingly supportive family that has enabled me to do that. So for me, partnership is at different levels. One is at the level of your professional place where you're partnering with people when you're uh, trying to excel in a team. Uh, and it could be with the guru, it could be, but it's equally uh, a partnership with a whole lot of other systems uh, at the home place, which enable you to uh, pursue your passion. Uh, so that enabling environment is also equally important.